by EFF and Peace Now Tambo. Also joining the conversation, Labor lawyer Natasha Mooney. And of course, uh, we are talking uh, the, the march today. So now, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. First and foremost, I mean, um, uh, it's one of the questions, of course, being asked already that uh, the EFF, for example, in Johannesburg went to, to, to three restaurants. Do you believe that is a representative sample that would uh, give you a, a, a good enough picture of what's happening on the ground? Uh, evening, Tabo, and evening to your viewers. Look, uh, the sample that we embarked upon at the Mall of Africa today was simply an oversight visit by the President and Commander-in-Chief, Julius Malem. So it's not a completely representative cycle in terms of uh, what is going on in the hospitality industry, particularly restaurants, in terms of their employment ratios, which is why we've also tasked our reasons and component structures to embark on the same oversight visit as it has been done in Tswane, for example, at Ocean Basket yesterday. So uh, we are going to tally up all of the information we have to give us an informed view in terms of what is going on in the hospitality industry. And funny enough, we might be able to find that there isn't an overemployment of foreign nationals in the sector. Rather, this is a vicious narrative that has been pushed by xenophobic people who are deflecting from a government that is unable to create employment and blaming foreign nationals. And it's a right-wing agenda, which we have seen in Europe, we've seen in the United States of America, of people trying to scapegoat foreign nationals for the inadequacies and failures of governments in their nations. So we're going to continue this initiative to be able to check whether there is a sufficient and satisfactory component of South Africans in the hospitality industry and various other industries in order to ensure that there is no animosity amongst our people and animosity that is seeing our people being beaten up in deep cliff right now by reactionaries such as Gantala. And animosity that is built up because people perceive the fact that the employers of people in this country are prioritizing foreign nationals and the only logic that they would have to do that is because they are able to exploit cheap migrant labor that won't be able to stand up because they are vulnerable. So that's the role of the EFF in ensuring that we ease animosities and we protect foreign nationals from exploitation. What, what is the theory of the EFF on the impact of immigration on, on the labor markets? I mean, if you critically look at, uh, for example, the type of uh, the economy or the characteristics of our economy in South Africa and the existing uh, skills of workers. Look, if you look at the development of society, at from the lens of political sciences. There's no society that has developed through narrow nationalism. So we have developed our society, a modern society, through an exchange of ideas, an exchange of skills, an exchange of minerals and resources, because we understand that we're living in a global community. So there can never be a detrimental relationship in terms of the exchange of people and labor practices and labor through the continent or throughout the world as well. So the question now becomes, how do we reach a balance between ensuring that there's not only a one-sided import or in interaction in terms of the economic indicators of the people that are coming into South Africa, which is the most vulnerable and the poorest of the poor, who are either running for asylum or are, running for, uh, are coming to South Africa because they perceive that there's more economic opportunity there. And the solution of that is, of course, intercontinental African trade. So ensuring that there is a labor market that is cohesive in Africa, that ensures that it's not a one-way train. South Africans go to other African nations as well, and those who come from other African nations into South Africa improve their skills and not only remain gardeners or domestic workers or those who work in restaurants, but actually improve themselves and are able to return to their countries and improve their countries as well. Yeah. So that is the problem of not having a pan-African policy in the country and thinking that we can be a developmental nation in isolation in a continent that is in tatters and in chaos at the level of war and at the level of, at the level of economy. Because Africa in general has been deliberately underdeveloped. So all African people who are black in particular are underskilled and desperate and vulnerable, which is why our people are coming to, uh, to South Africa and rightfully so, to seek for economic opportunities. So we must be able to create conducive environments to ensure that there's a developmental initiative that ensures that our people do not fight with each other. We're able to go to Nigeria to seek our job opportunities there. Nigerians are able to come to South Africa, and there's an equal exchange of those skills and resources. Yeah. Uh, Natasha, let's bring you in here. I mean, uh, there are employers uh, in restaurants who are looking at what is going on, and they are probably quite concerned at this particular moment. What are their rights as far as um, uh, these particular ratios of employment? What should they be considering? Well, it's not in terms of ratios um, that's, that's being utilized by the EFF. It really is the fact that they need to be law-abiding citizens. And an employer can only employ a person who um, has the correct permits 
in order to work for them. So they have to comply with the South African immigration legislation. You can only employ a foreign national who is in possession of a valid work visa. How do you get a, a possession of a valid work visa? Well, you've got to have um, a job offer. And, and as the EFF said, it has to be somebody who uh, can show that they have tried every other South African um, to work in that position and cannot find that person. Um, so it, it really is for those positions that are critical skills. Um, working in a restaurant might not be a critical skill unless it is a speciality restaurant doing speci speciality things um, that are, are um, common to, to, your, to your continent or to, to your country. Um, and then, uh, yeah, critical skills of work visa, you really don't need a visa or a job offer. Um, uh, you can come and, and, and work, um, uh, but your visa will take up to about 14, 15 months to, to get. So, yes, yeah. um, it is, we, are, we have a, a problem. There are a lot of vulnerable people here in South Africa, and I think that, um, I think that we can't narrow it down um, to, to just foreign nationals. I think yeah. that we need to be, the answer is to be, um, to think wider, to stop uh, thinking with our blinkers on, yeah. um, because this, the standpoint that has been taken by the EFF uh, initially seemed to be very intimidatory, um, and and really the they, that's not their position, and that's not what they should be doing. They should they should be allowing the labour departments to do this, and and, and actually asking the questions um, in Parliament or in, in around the municipalities, etc as to why the Labour Department's not doing their, their job um, correctly and, and, why, and why do we have this issue where it seems to be that um, the, the foreign nationals will work for whatever. Um, we have a national um, threshold, statutory threshold to observe and if those employers are not observing them, then, then yes, they are undermining South Africa. Um, but if they are observing them, then, then the, the issue is um, that uh, they couldn't find uh, a South African to work for them, or maybe South Africans don't want to be doing the job. Uh, what are the issues? I think it's much broader than um, just the just uh, uh, waiters and waitresses in, in a restaurant and hospitality industry. Well, and may I please just say this, that the, the restaurant and hospitality industry is highly regulated. Um, these, the employees there pay tax, um, they pay UIF, uh, PAYE, um, and workman's compensation. So they add into our fiscus. Um, they are taxpayers. Very seldom do foreign yeah. nationals um, get uh, UIF payments yeah. um, uh, from uh, the I, I, Labor I, I, Department. I, 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 I. I, I think more than the challenge, though, uh, uh, Natasha, is, is around the fact that does this uh, uh, degree of immigration increase competition for, for existing jobs in certain uh, occupational sectors, particularly the hospitality sector, uh, and uh, to, to the extent that it disadvantages the, 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 the local people of that particular uh, uh, nation? It may well be. It may well be. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a labor lawyer, so I look, I look for um, who is doing the right thing and who has the permit. Yeah. Um, and, and let's set aside critical skills, but um, if, if I'm in the hospitality industry, um, a, a large hotel, um, I, I'm certainly going to um, uh, look for South Africans first and foremost, because I, as the employer, will get into trouble if I hire um, foreign nationals who do not have those permits. It's very difficult to get permits here. Um, and um, the, 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 the government has done a lot to try and persuade um, Zimbabweans, for instance, to, to go home. So they have a year to get another kind of permit. When, when I think the, the immigration departments know that it takes a, a between 10 to 15 months to get the correct permit. Um, it's it's they stuck between a rock and a hard place, but I, I do agree with you. It's a very it's it's very tenuous, um, and and I, but I think that the the broader issue here there is a broader issue here, and we have to look at it in in um, in 
as a whole and not piecemeal it um, because it does look a bit xenophobic um, to me. Um, it may not look xenophobic to the EFF, um, but it does mean you're highlighting a very vulnerable category of people that have, have come here to make, to make a living. Um, and, and that's not who we are. Um, and that's not in our constitution. We'll get a reaction uh, uh, in a moment from Sinao to, to, to that issue. Natasha, stay with us. Uh, in Focus continues shortly. Uh, Natasha and Moni, lo Labour lawyer as well as uh, MP for the EFF, uh, Sinao Tambo with us uh, tonight. We are back in a moment. Welcome back live with us tonight in Focus News from Africa Channel 405. And we continue then in conversation with Labour lawyer Natasha Moni as uh, well as uh, MP for the EFF, uh, Sinao Tambo. Sinao, uh, has the EFF here taken the, the job of Labour inspectors uh, in a sense? And um, are you not in conflict with uh, uh, laws and rules of this country as far as that is concerned? Uh, for example, going into a restaurant asking for uh, information of who is being uh, hired here. This is information that uh, really should be kept confidential to the establishment, is it not? No, look, uh, I don't think we had disagreed with Natasha fundamentally up until that specific point, and of course the perceived xenophobic stance that she thinks the EFF has taken. I don't think the EFF has ever exhibited a tendency or an attitude that we must wait and fold our arms in hope that the government of the day will ever do its job. We've long resigned to the fact that they are not capable of effectively doing their duties in any sector of society. So our interventions have always been perhaps not according to the norm and perhaps uh, not what is known or usually is used to, but it's never been illegal. We didn't go in guns blazing into Cream or any of the other two restaurants that we visited today. We had an agreement with Cream yesterday with their managers that we want to have an engagement with them. We didn't threaten them with either that it's either you have an engagement with us or else. They agreed politely that, look, it's a conversation that needs to be had. And even in the conversation that we had today, they're saying that it was a constructive engagement and they regretted having to, having listened to legal advice that actually stifled conversation, which is the fundamental basis of our democracy as a country. So we can't put our hands in the air and wait for any government sector in this country to do anything without any political pressure. That has been the role of the EFS when it comes to the land question or any other economic matter that relates to the development of our people. So our intervention was on that basis. We went to have a conversation. No one has been threatened. We are conducting and performing our roles as members of the legislature. And that's all it was. The owners of CREAM were not offended. We were able to have a very decent conversation where they gave us a, break, a breakdown of their employee staff complement. Yeah. We didn't ask for anyone's personal details. We didn't ask for anyone's ID numbers. Yeah. We simply got a, a brief breakdown of the staff complement. And even when we went to that restaurant to do away with this narrative that we're actually perpetuating xenophobic sentiments or highlighting the very vulnerable groups in society. We do not speak to the employees of CREAM at all. Yeah. When we got to the door and it was locked and there was initial confrontation, we looked for the manager who was standing very far away from the restaurant and we went to confront him directly. Why are you being hostile? Because we had an agreement as from yesterday. So our fight is not with the foreign nationals that are in the employ of any industry, be it the hospitality or any other one. We're not fighting with them. We're saying it's actually in their best interest to be able to work alongside South Africans mm. to protect their interests as a vulnerable group in this country from exploitation and, of course, to ensure that the animosity that exists in this country and the rising xenophobic sentiments are curbed away by doing away with false narratives and ensuring that localities from certain specific areas are employed to be able to allow our people to work together in these sectors. Yeah. What, what, have, what would have happened if your findings were that at Cream or any of the other two restaurants, the ratio was 60-40 uh, uh, in the other direction in support, uh, 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 rather leaning on the side of uh, foreign nationals? Look, we would have just taken that on with you. We were going to include it as part of our findings in a general fact-finding mission that we we're embarking on, which is ongoing. So we were going to, of course, advise the ownership of Cream and advise the ownership of Ponta and Topo Zero, which is in Mall of Africa, that, look, this is an untenable situation that is going to lead to you having conflicts with local South Africans because they don't feel represented in this industry. And the high levels of unemployment have resulted in high levels of frustration, which we have seen flare up in 2008 when there were highly toxic xenophobic attacks and in Soweto today by opportunistic elements that want to deviate attention from those who have the duty of creating employment in this country. So we're going to explain the consequences of having such uh, 
uh, employment patterns and uh, such an unequal staff complement that was representative of where such a business exists. And we're going to take that as part of our fact finding mission. And of course, it will be part of our legislative interventions going forward. That's all that was going to happen. There was not going to be an eviction of foreign nationals. Those are African brothers and sisters. So we are not a violent organization as much as many people want to portray that. But we are one that likes engaging, and that was very. Uh, that was put across today because there was no violent interaction, there was peaceful interaction, we got what we needed, got the information that we needed, and we're moving forward yeah. in that regard. Well, what's your rebuttal, so to speak, to the argument that uh, many are raising, and you mentioned some of the groupings that are, are currently raising this argument, that immigration increases uh, competition for existing jobs, but these are not critical uh, jobs. These are uh, uh, packers that are... A till, uh, uh, waiters at a restaurant, these are jobs that should be ocu being occupied by South Africans. I find it quite funny because South Africa bases itself as a free market capitalist country, and now suddenly there's concerns around competition. But that's besides the point. We must be able to strike a balance, which is something that we agree with, that there must be competition within the labor sector, but we must also be able to improve the skill set of our people. Right now our people are competing in the same bracket of economic opportunities because we're deliberately underdeveloped, all of us. There's black people from Nigeria competing to be a gardener with a black person from Suez. That's something that needs to change at a structural level, not to say let's reserve the jobs of gardeners for only South African black people. Of what use is that? Because that doesn't develop the skills of the people of Suez, it doesn't develop the skills of the people of Nigeria. So we must stop being protective of industries that have been designated for black people as a result of deliberate underdevelopment during apartheid and colonialism. We can't want to defend the right to be a restaurant worker when you know that it pays peanuts. Rather, the argument must be how do we develop each other? How do we improve and, and increase intercontinental trade? How do we develop the skills of our people? And how do we invest in other African nations to ensure that they do not have this burning need to come to South Africa because they view it as developed just to come and compete to have a spaza shop here and cause an unnecessary antagonism that shouldn't exist either way? Natasha, do. Restaurants have legal grounds to uh, refuse uh, to, to give details of uh, their staff complement and uh, what the, the formation, the ratio is? I don't see what legal ground they have to hand over this, this kind of information, um, other than um, the intimidate, being intimidated to do so um, in terms of, uh, there doesn't have to be intimidation via violence. Um, you can be intimidated by the fact that there's social media and that um, the EFF is naming the actual restaurants. Um, and and, and this, may, this may in turn cause these restaurants um, to either lose custom um, or, or even worse. Um, they, they say that they spoke to the managers. Um, these are the people that can hire and fire. What is the first thing that you're going to do if you are a manager of a particular restaurant? The first you're going to do is make sure that uh, the next time you come knocking um, that the ratios are correct. That's intimidation. That's that's not being allowed to, to if you are hiring um, legal foreigners, people with, with work visas and permits. Um, that, that's unfair for the um, that's unfair for, for the employer um, and, in, and a very unfair for the employee. Um, it can result in a foreigner losing their job, and whether they are legally here or illegally here. Also, um, I'd like to I'd like to look at um, uh, the, the what they call interventions is broadcast um, those. Um, oh. And they're looking at restaurants. Um, Natasha, if you, if you, I, I, don't, I don't know how, 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 um, how, how we can deal with this, but uh, your line uh, is, is not really clear at this moment. But uh, uh, let, let's try again, if, 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 if you can, maybe we'll get you on a clearer line. You're saying you're looking at interventions? Your auditing firms, your, your large um, attorneys' firms, to see what their um, ratio is to uh, for, for black white, uh, Indian colored, and, for, and foreign nationals. Oh, Natasha, unfortunately, I can't uh, uh, make uh, uh, what you're saying, the make of what you're saying, that because of that uh, terrible line, and we are uh, completely out of time uh, on this particular conversation. Natasha would like to reflect on that uh, maybe uh, at another time. When